Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Y'all thought I was done for the day, huh? How'd y'all like that Ronnie Coleman video? You guys let me know. Everybody over here, go check out the Ronnie Coleman... The Ronnie O'Neill video. Shout out Ronnie Coleman. He's the bodybuilder. I don't know why I keep thinking Ronnie Coleman. But anyways, go check out the Ronnie O'Neill video I just did today. Pretty, co pretty cool, pretty cool. But anyways, we're moving straight on. Uh, what is going on with me today, y'all? We're moving straight on to the Daryl Brooks saga. The one y'all love. I know you guys love it. Anyways, we have a witness that was just chilling in his house. You know, younger guy. Relaxing, cooling in his house. When Daryl Brooks comes and wreaks some havoc around his area. So we're going to go. Prosecution grills him real quick. Brooks with the most, you know, with the most elaborate expressions ever. Um, he'll be in the corner too. So let's check this thing out. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand and my clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony... Bro looks nervous <laughs> from the time he got up there. He looks like the most nervous one yet. Teresa, Look at how bro got up there. You Do you My boy took a deep breath out here. Stop playing with him. <laughs> that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Um, my name is uh, Carlos Arechiga Velasco is my second last name, uh, C-A-R-L-O-S, Carlos, and then A-R-E-C-H-I-G-A, Arechiga, and then Velasco, N-O-L-A-S-C-O. You got that hyphenated last name, that's that rich blood right there, that's that, that's that historic blood right there, shit. <laughs> Thank you, go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Uh, sir, back in November of 2021, were you living here in the city of Waukesha? Yes. What was your home address on November 21st of 2021? Uh, 338 Maple Avenue, um, second unit or upper unit. Okay, that's a duplex? It's a duplex, yeah. Were you home uh, at 338 Maple in the upper unit on the afternoon of that day, the 21st? Yes. Do you recall uh, at some point hearing a noise or something that was out of place outside of your window. Yeah, during that time I was sitting down and to my left um, is a window that looks down to the driveway and um, when I was sitting down I heard like a big screech, scratch, sort of kind of like a just a rough scratch of either metal or whatever. Again, I'm going to tell you guys, um, Bro was probably over there playing video games or something and probably noticed it. I'm going to tell you guys, Brooks fucked his car up after the parade. That's what's crazy to me. And more and more, I'm starting to realize this deeper into the case that we go. Brooks scratched his shit after the parade. Not scratched it, but he disabled his thing after the parade. The only thing he did during that parade was indent his trunk inward. I'm going to throw a picture up. All he did was indent his trunk inward. That's what. That's the extent of the damage, I think. What really happened is he, he tried to go behind these houses, all these back alleys, and he fucked his car up. We had one officer say that he was walking with his daughter. He saw him go behind the back alleys. And now we had a Jeff Goldblum looking guy who was also like a resident in the area, saw him in the back alleys. And now we have this guy. We have this guy saying the same thing. So, you know, all the things Brooks wants to say about evidence and, and, and tampering and this, that, and the other. Bro, there's too many corroborating witnesses. Everybody links up so properly that it's impossible, bro. It's impossible. These people link up like a perfect puzzle piece. Because it's the truth. The truth always links up. And as soon as I look out, because um, the window's right there, I just <coughs> peeped open the blinds. And um, I was able to see that um, there was... A vehicle that I had never recognized um, and as soon as I looked over I was able to see just somebody being able to get a uh, just jump over the hood of the car kind of uh, dash away and when I saw the car I just um, saw that it was really beat up and my first instinct was uh, like who is this I hope our cars are okay wasn't really sure what was going on um, you, since we uh, sorry 
you off there. Could you describe that the vehicle for us that you saw in the driveway? It was a red vehicle, um, SUV, bigger, not a sedan, okay. uh, not a truck, not a pickup truck. It was just a red SUV. When you looked out your... I like how he said, not a sedan, not a pickup truck. So there's no confusion. This was a red SUV. Ford Escape, to be specific, you know what I mean? But again, the truck was really beat up after the parade, in my opinion. Or second story window at the driveway and you saw the vehicle. At that time, could you see whether there was any damage to the vehicle? Yeah. Said it was beat up. Um, yeah, I saw damage to the vehicle. Um, it was mostly at the hood of the car. Yep. Um, you can see uh, damage to the front windshield as well. Um, I was able to even see um, sort of kind of like a lit up headband on the rear view mirror or the side view mirror uh, kind of hanging right above. Uh, what the fuck? So there was a headband from the parade hanging on his truck. Tell me, t there's so much evidence dripping off of this truck, literally. You mean to tell me there was a headband still hanging on his truck? That's crazy. <laughs> Like, Daryl Brooks really, like, he really knew that he was going to jail forever or he was going to get shot. He had to have known that because there's no way you do this shit and expect to walk out. Like, you're done. Kind of inside or on it, I guess you can say. Okay. Uh, when you looked out the window, had the SUV already come to a stop or was it still moving? It was at a complete stop when I looked out the window. Okay. The person you described earlier... Where did you first see that person? Um, already outside of the vehicle. Like I said, jumping out, mostly over the hood of the car. Um, and as soon as that happened, I instinctively kind of uh, just shut down the blind. Um, and since we live in a duplex, I thought it was somebody from downstairs that maybe crashed into one of our cars. Maybe uh, they caused an accident. and. Um, I tried contacting the people downstairs right away, so I, I wasn't really uh, in much of a threat, I guess you can say, but I was just confused at the moment. Okay. We'll come back to that. I want to ask you a couple more questions about this person that you saw. Mm -hmm. uh, was this person directly below you in your vantage point, or was it off to the side? Um, it Which was I more... Relevancy. Um, bro, there's all relevancy to this question. Brooks, shut up, bro. Jesus, let's have a calm day for once you know let's have a smooth questioning for once overruled he may answer it was more towards the side uh wasn't really below me um sort of leaving my point of view from the window um did yeah. you see what direction that person went after they jumped over the foot of the suv it would have been it would have been sort of straight ahead um kind of towards the left of the driveway so i couldn't see them anymore um we have two windows one in the bedroom one in the living room and if I was in the bedroom, I would have been able to see exactly where they went, but they just went left from my point of view. Um, so would that have been toward or away from Mabel? Um, that would have been... Oh, hold on. If there's an objection, wait until I rule on it. Um, He's not leaving And anybody. overruled, uh, the witness may answer. Um, it was towards Maple Avenue. Did you see that person reach Maple Avenue? Um, no. Why not? Um, the point of view from the window doesn't really let me see towards. My guy has a PhD in minding his own business. That's why he doesn't know. <laughs> he was like, instinctively, I thought to close my blinds back down. Hey, and I don't blame you, broski. If that had nothing to do with me, shit, that had nothing to do with me, shit. Because you see what looking got you, right? Looking and trying to see what happened got you sus subpoenaed to go to court. So, you know. Minding your own business is a very strong power to possess. You know, not every man has that capability. But in this case, I'm glad he wasn't because, you know, again, more corroboration down toward Maple Street. What the officer say? He was behind the alley, ran out. I think he said Maple Street. Like, you know what I mean? You can't run away from these facts. You know what I mean? We're not leading the witness. These are facts. Maple Avenue uh, or Maple Avenue altogether. Okay. After the person went out of your field of view, <coughs> is that when you tried to contact your downstairs neighbor? Yeah, because um, I assumed that it was maybe somebody they invited over because uh, I really didn't recognize the person, and I tried contact contacting them to make sure uh, they knew who it was or 
who the person yeah was. From the moment you first looked out your window and saw that SUV until the moment that the person we've been talking about went out of your field of view, did you see any <coughs> other people out your outside your window? Uh, no. Did you at some point go downstairs to investigate? Yeah. Um, <laughs> if I wouldn't have. I would have stayed my ass in the house. Or I would have got my Glockington real quick on the side of me and then went outside. But still, I'm not trying to shoot nobody outside my house anyway. So it's like, yeah, I probably would have stayed inside, just me personally. That was during me going downstairs. I was trying to contact the people downstairs because they always invite people over. Um, and that was a week <laughs> I've never seen in my life. Um, so I assume maybe it was one of their friends, somebody. So when I went downstairs, I sort of came to the front of the vehicle. I was able to see the damage up front. The hood was uh, really beat up. You could see it steaming a little bit. Um, so when I contacted the neighbors, they, um, one of them actually told me that um, they'll ask around. He came back to me. He said, that's nobody's car. They all came out. We were all kind of surrounding it, and we were so confused as to why the car was oh. there. See, and all these things match up because Brooks had said that there was um, a report of people standing around the car and that I think he tried to switch it up and say it was a bunch of black men, but it was just a bunch of people, and it was the people who lived around the area. Now we're talking to the people. You see how all this shit goes in a circle, right? Because, again, evidence doesn't lie. It has to make sense. It has to make sense. There's no way around it. If it's true evidence, if it starts to not make sense, then it's a lie. Like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, everybody was surrounding it trying to figure out who the hell's car this was. And remember, this is not midnight yet or super late at night. This is like toward the afternoon, probably toward the evening time. So everybody's still kind of like, oh, OK, what's going on here? What's going on? Oh, steaming truck. Like, you know what I mean? We're trying to figure this out. And at the same time, when we were looking at the damage of the vehicle, um, people were leaving uh, downtown Waukesha from Maple Avenue from the Same. library going the other way. And some of them were running. Some of them looked scared. Some of them, uh, what's it called? One of them told us to call the cops. Um, we were kind of confused as to why. And uh, well, mostly because we saw the vehicle. And we tried not touching it. We tried just leaving it be. One of the people from downstairs called the cops, and we waited a little bit. And as soon as the cops showed up, they told us to go back inside. And I was sort of inside for the rest of the afternoon until the car was removed. When you first started standing around the vehicle with uh, the other people you talked about, do you remember approximately how many people were standing around the SUV? And were there black men standing there too? Because Brooks was trying to say that there are other black men and it, it you know, possibly wasn't him. You know, there's just a bunch of black men there. Um, it would have been, it would have been the, the three main neighbors that we have from downstairs, uh, um, two, uh, two of their girlfriends, I believe, and then two of their other friends of, would have maybe been around like six, seven. Uh, oh, they're having a party. My mom was also down uh, with me, and then I was there with her. Oh, it was but, a party. Um, yeah, we tried not really interacting with the vehicle. We were telling everybody not to interact. Bro, it was 10 people down there. That was a party. And that's the good thing about having a small town, because everybody's going to come and be nosy. And when something bad is happening, that nosiness is what you need. Facts. Back with it. And was it a... At that time, while you were standing with those people around the SUV, that you saw other people running down Maple? Yes. And what direction were they running? Uh, they were heading towards uh, sort of la, the, the restaurant, La Estacion, go, um, heading towards kind of like the train tracks, uh, leaving from the library uh, from Maple Avenue. So would that be uh, from, would that be running north or running south? Um, I guess if you're, if you're looking at downtown Waukesha, um, I guess that would be north. Um, I guess if south is heading towards downtown, north would be heading away from it. Okay, let's put up... Um... Yeah, get an exhibit. Get us an exhibit because we don't understand directions, brother. Not me. I wish I could tell you that I was a, one of the manly men. I'm a manly man. I could I could change the oil. I could change the tire. I, I could do some with the trend. You know, I could do some, but I don't know what directions. Man, get me a compass. Get me a phone or else I don't know which direction we're going. I think I do know where the north. I think I do know where the North Star is. I haven't gone hunting in a long time, but at least I know where North is at night. 
but shit. <laughs> that's pretty much it, bro. Objection, what, what's being looked up that's not already in the exhibit? Look like someone was being looked up. Via. I can't answer that question. I don't know. Is it, is it is it exhibit? Can I? I guess on my objection would be: Is there an exhibit being shown, or is there being? There's nothing shown to the witness. You right? can't object by asking a question. An objection is a statement. Go to school, bro. Go to school. When he goes to prison, or I should say he's in prison. I hope he's going to school. Get a GED or something. Do something with your brain. I don't know. No, it's off. Um, is that so you objected. I sustained the objection. And so uh, I told the state not to show the map with annotations. Okay. So whatever they're doing in response to that, I can't something, answer. Something popped up on the screen to look like they was trying to Google something. And then now my screen is off now. Maybe so that see. wouldn't be an exhibit. I, I didn't see anything. So we can take that up later if need be. But um, let's keep going. Oh, yeah, you could do this outside of the presence of the jury. I forget. And who cares if they're Googling something? I don't know the full rules to the court, but I'm pretty sure you can Google something. They probably just accidentally displayed it on his screen and then took it back off. I'll try to clear this up without any more exhibits for Mr. Brooks. When you are standing in your driveway facing Maple Avenue, if you wanted to go to downtown Waukesha, would you go left or right? Uh, left. Objection. Uh, that was asked and answered. He asked north or south, and he already answered that question. This question has not been asked or answered, so your objection is overruled. The witness may answer. And it, it, I'm sorry, you can answer that again. Um, it was left, yeah. And if you wanted to go to La Estacion or the train tracks, would you go left or right? It would be right. So the people who were running past your house on Maple, were they running towards downtown, or were they running towards La Estación? Towards La Estación. Sorry, was there an objection? Accent answered. Um, it was clarification, so uh, his answer may stand. The objection is overruled. Okay. Now, at the time that you were standing around the SUV with those other people, how much time had gone past between that, that time and the time that you first heard the noise and looked out your window upstairs? Objection, relevancy. Overruled. Oh, um, I would say that it was maybe around three, two minutes, not even that much, because I still had to get my shoes and everything. I wanted to go downstairs, and at the same time, I was texting uh, the neighbor from downstairs. Um, so I would say a little bit of time passed by before I went downstairs. Okay. Can we please show for everyone? I was about to say that I wouldn't be going down there. But now that you think about it, you got 10 people, you got 10 human beings versus one, even if it is a threat, we'll just jump on top of you. Especially you, my neighbor, and I know you already, oh, hell no, nah, we about to stomp you out, bro. So they probably felt comfortable going outside. Exhibit number 65, a video which has previously been received. Go ahead. Do you recognize uh, the area that's depicted in this exhibit? Yeah. Tell us what we're looking at here. <clears throat> um, right now we're looking at uh, sort of the side of the building that's uh, from Les Paul that's facing my house and facing Maple Avenue. The same direction. This is actually the same video. If you guys know this, check out the arrow. Look at those two people walking the doggo and that's it. Just the two people walking the dog. You got uh, orange bandana or like something on his head, some orange on his head, some black on her head. That's the police officer off duty walking his daughter back. Somebody in my comments said they wish that he walked on the outside of the road and she was walking on the inside. I agree, but when you're talking and walking and doing things, even I catch myself with the woman by the traffic. Sometimes you're just switching, you're just switching sides, not even realizing, especially walking the dog. He has the dog. Somebody said, I wish he had her on the inside, right? Not by the traffic, but he has the dog. What is the dog going to do? Pee, poop, do all that shit. That's why he's on that side. Just to clarify for that one person. Um, that 
um, house in the corner is uh, my neighbor's house. Uh, I know them as the Loxes. And uh, over there to the left where the uh, perimeter of the fence ends, that's my house with the brick sort of uh, kind of pillars and balcony. Uh, that'd be my house. Okay. So I know I could see what the witness was pointing to. We're going to um, So very well. I just wanted it's kind of difficult for me to put that on the record. So if you can have some further questioning, that would be good. Sure. That screen in front of you is a touch screen. As long as you use your okay. finger. Can you circle your house for us? Um, it would be right here. And we're at the uh, zero second timestamp on this, just for the record. Oh, okay. Now I see his house. Uh, and then if we could clear that, please. The bricks. The bricks in the back. Now I'm going to ask Ms. Gussie to pull up the zoom tool again. <clears throat> There's the police officer right there with his daughter. It's crazy how all this ties together so beautifully. It's crazy. It's like a puzzle piece. Zoomed in on the top left quadrant of this photo, or of this video. Uh, if we could play here from the beginning. Objection. What's the relevancy? Shut up, folks. Oh, oh, oh. It's been admitted already. He testified his house is in it. And keep in mind, everybody's driving slow. You know, the parade just ended. Nobody's thinking like, oh, let me have my daughter on this side of the street because there's a maniac driving, you know? There he is. There he is. Awesome. Boom. Boom, bam. Spam, bam. There he is. In 4K. More like 720. Not even 1080p, but, you know. In grainy vision. There he is. Running like he stole something. At the 27 second mark, we pause there. Sir, do you recall, uh, well, let me just back up there. Did you see on the video there uh, a, a figure emerging from your driveway? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Could you circle that figure for us? Right here. Objection. Relevant. Right there as well. Where, yeah. And vehicle. what's the second thing you circled? Uh, just a vehicle. Okay. Let's clear those two circles, please. Does that figure understanding the limitations of how far away this camera is, does that figure appear to be consistent with the figure you saw hopping over the hood of the SUV? Objection. Speculative. Um, overruled, the witness may answer. Um, at the time of my sort of testimony when I was, when we got a visit from uh, detectives, I, I told them that I did see a figure. I remember saying that he had a hoodie. At the, at the time, I told them that... Um, <laughs> I wasn't really sure of the color of it, and um, when we were, uh, when I was asked again the next morning, um, I I just told him that maybe it was like a like a gray or white, but I told him that maybe it was part of the stuff that I saw on top of the car. I remember seeing scarves on on top of the car, uh, that headband that was white with colors. So at the time it was like a flash, um, and I was, um, what's it called? I can All right, bro. Just say the thing was gray or white. Jesus. What? Jeez, bro. I know the state's thinking like, damn, bro. Just answer the fucking question. Bro's giving us a whole backstory on his life and his colorblindness and just everything, bro. You answer the question and move on. The one thing I will say, though, um... The one thing I will say that sticks out to me is that there were scarves on his hood. Like, you have to be a demon spawn to be doing this type of shit. Just running through people, scarves and shit, flying onto your car and you're not stopping. Like, dude. And see that I was sort of correct because it was a year ago. And when I gave my testimony, I said everything I could like that I remembered at that time, which was... Um, Wrap person it up, I saw bro. a hoodie on, uh, wasn't really able to see them face to face, uh, but I can see that they were sort of leaving the car, jumping over the hood of the car, and just kind of, yeah. Okay. And you did not see that person's face? No. Okay. Um, let's play just a couple more seconds here before we hit play, though. I'll just ask you to focus on the figure we've been talking Brooks about. Brooks is going to eat that up. 
that little shaky ass response that he gave, Brooks is gonna eat that up. And pause. At 31 seconds. Based on what you've seen so far in this exhibit, does that figure appear to be traveling in a path consistent with what you remember? Yeah, you're actually, you're saying, you say you can't, you can't see the street from the window. Um, overall, he may answer the way that that question was phrased. Um, when I mentioned the direction of the person that I saw leaving, um, facing my driveway, um, obviously there's an exit which connects that entryway where all the cars are parked and then uh, our driveway where our garage is and sort of the way that I saw the person leaving was towards the left of my field of view which would be heading towards Maple Avenue. Okay. I'm not going to show for the witness only please, exhibit number 66. Do you see a vehicle in your driveway in this picture? <laughs> yeah, it's the red SUV that I described. We'll show now for the witness only, please, exhibit number 67. <coughs> Look at the antifreeze spilling out the bottom of the window, all that shit. That's crazy. Man, he fucked that up. Right next to the house. This guy had the master plan of leaving his car right next to the brick house. Fucking moron. Thank you. Go ahead. All right. Thank you. So you previously testified about what's in this photo. Mm -hmm. That's the red SUV we've been talking about, correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we are facing, if you're the person taking the picture right now, are you facing towards Maple or away? Away from Maple Avenue. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at 68, please. This is just a close-up view of that red SUV. Yeah. Objection. Leading. Man, Sustain look at all this the form shit. Of question. What is this? It is um, the red SUV uh, in my driveway, uh, all beat up. And you referenced a stump earlier when you were describing this <coughs> photograph. Can you, can you point that out for us? Maybe circle it for us? Um, Objection. Relevancy as to a stump. What does that have to do with um, Overruled. The witness may answer. His objections um, always end in questions. I'm like, bro, figure it out. That You can't just say something. Don't ask. Ugh. That stump of clog would be sort of on uh, that part of the picture. The left side of the picture? Yeah, the left side of the picture. Can we please clear that, Madam Clerk? Was that stump in that position in your driveway before you saw this red SUV? No. Objection. Relevancy. Overruled, it's relevant. The witness may answer. Um, no. Okay, let's take a look at Exhibit 69, please. So what direction have we moved as we go from exhibit 68 to 69? Um, we have moved more back of the driveway. We have moved uh, looking, instead of the left side of the house, we're looking at the left back side of the house. So we're moving away from Maple? We're moving away from Maple Avenue. Okay, and you already talked about these three cars. Can you just remind us what, what these three cars are? Neighbors um, <laughs> so um, that white SUV, that's uh, one of our vehicles. <clears throat> the blue SUV is uh, one of my neighbor's vehicles, as well as the um, brown sedan as well, uh, as we can see from this picture. Do you know if any of those three vehicles sustained damage on November 21st? Objection. Hearsay. Um, overruled, he was asked if he knew, not what he heard. Objection. Um, speculation. Um, overruled. Um, from... When we were looking back um, during that area, when we saw our neighbor's yard, when we saw everything, um, <clears throat> I couldn't really uh, see uh, like damage right away from any of our vehicles. However, uh, it's not in this image. Uh, it's in the other image um, that I was shown earlier. There's a black SUV to the right of that uh, brown sedan. Uh, that vehicle uh, did have a little bit of a uh, sort of, sort of some damage, uh, what's it called? But apart from that, no, everything else was fine. Okay. Let's move on to exhibit 70, please. Objection, what's the relevancy of this? Oh, the exhibits have been received, so the... Man, he fucked that car up. If you guys go back to that red SUV, bro, there was nothing but the frame of the front of the car. 
And I've seen some fucked up cars. When the bumper's gone, there's nothing but that little frame there. That's what he took that big whole SUV down to. Then he wrecks it on a telephone pole or a stump. Moron. Statement question the witness on them. What direction have we moved from the last picture to this picture? We are now towards the back of uh, uh, my, my uh, building or my house. And did your, the person who took the picture, did we turn to the right or to the left or not at all? Um, they, we moved a little bit more towards the left, uh, just getting a better angle of the back side of the house. But now we're facing to the right? Oh, uh, yeah, now we're facing right. Uh, I can oh. rephrase. Go ahead. Do you know where Prospect is? Uh, Prospect, uh, yeah. Prospect is, uh, uh, it's a one-way street. Uh, you can't enter from Maple side, but you can enter from the back side of Prospect. Do you uh, see a street light in this photograph? Yes. What street is that street light on? Uh, that's uh, Prospect. Okay. The one-way street. And the red, or excuse me, the black SUV you talked about a, a moment ago, is, is that in this photograph? Uh, yeah, uh, that uh, SUV right there. That's the SUV you described as having been damaged? It was uh, honestly not that much, uh, just sort of kind of like the front of, of the SUV. Um, there was a vehicle. Bro, his testimony gives me an, an like a like a headache. Like I don't know. It's just sort of like I don't know. It was just kind of like just, uh, bro. Just say was it damaged or not. Damage is damage. Cosmetic or physical or, or serious damage. Just. Oh. However, uh, from uh, if there's a there was another image as well, um, looking at sort of the area, sort of the path that was between uh, Deluxe's house and the backyard. Uh, that one did sustain uh, some scratches. He could have just said yes. It it got some scratches. But anyways, okay, bro. Yeah. Uh, if we go to the next <coughs> photograph, we'll get a 71, please. Okay. See the street light again? Yeah. Is that the same street light we saw in Exhibit 70? Objection. Answered that already. Same street light, same question, basically. Different picture. Your objections noted. It's overruled. The witness may answer. It is. Do you see an orange cone in this photograph? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. The witness may answer. Uh, I do. What, if anything, do you see in the immediate vicinity of that orange cone? Objection. Uh, relevancy. Overruled. The witness may answer. Um, in that sort of area, um, I see um, the the black SUV uh, right in front of it. I see um, some of those uh, stumps of logs that uh, I mentioned before. Uh, one that we saw previously was uh, in my driveway, but um, some of those. Okay, cool. So he sees a log. All right, bet. So I'm just gonna pass on, and and now we're gonna figure it out. Home uh, objection, yeah. speculation. Overall, the witness may answer. Um, I do. Well, um, what's it called? I, I can see what it is, but I don't personally recognize uh, it. When you say you don't personally recognize it, what do you mean? Um, leading. Objection I've, leading. Overall, he may answer. I've never really seen it. Uh, um, it looks to be like a, like a beanie, uh, but I've never really seen it. But <coughs> our family doesn't own it. We don't own it. It's okay. not ours. So you've never seen it in that backyard before? No. We zoom back out, please. And move to exhibit 71. Excuse me, 72. These are oh, the yeah, stumps. Those logs fucked this thing up. Look at those logs. He probably drove around the black SUV thinking the route was safe and tore his thing up. What you talked about earlier? Tore it yeah. up. Yeah. What direction is the photographer facing now? Um, whereas we were facing sort of uh, turning right, or I guess we were facing the left side of the building now we're facing the right side of the building the same side that um the video camera from les paul was facing uh in the previous video okay where's prospect in relation to the photographer uh, prospect would be behind uh the photographer okay is this what these stumps looked like uh earlier <laughs> in the day on november 21st before Ob you saw the red suv objection relevancy overruled um they do not no or they did not uh they were set in place uh, on the ground and they
they were sort of a little bit more together because they were like a seating area for uh, huh. my neighbors. Okay. I get it now. I get it. That was the log was set up there. The other log was set up there. And everybody would go and talk story at the back. Well, guess what? You guys set up a homemade Daryl Brooks ramp that shut his car down. That shit is it's poetic. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> The car part you referenced earlier, is that what we're looking at here? Yes. <laughs> to your recollection... He tore his thing up, bro. I don't even know what that is. You guys in the comments let me know. What the fuck is that? All I know is you're not moving after you lose something that big. That's Was that car part in your neighbor's backyard before you saw the red SUV on November 21st? Objection. Speculation. Oh, Um, no. Um, uh, my neighbor's backyard is pretty well kept up. Uh... They have a really nice backyard, and uh, they don't have any garbage, no nothing in their backyard. That was pretty much it for prosecution. They pretty much destroy Brooks. Like, the pictures alone, the evidence of him running away, it's insane. Like, this is, yeah, it's pretty bad. And he's just objecting as it comes, but it's really not helping him because all he does is get overruled, and he can't even say anything about it because he knows... He knows it's relevant. He keeps saying objection relevance. You know that's the most relevant piece of information there is. A whole car part on the floor. But anyways, we're going to come back when he cross-examines the same guy. Again, it's a longer one. But with his responses, I'm expecting Buddy to kind of, I don't know, give some wishy-washy answers. I don't like the sort of, kind of, I'm not sure, um, kind of, sort of. That That's all his answers consist of. But anyway. We're going to see how it goes. I'm going to catch you guys with the next one very soon. I love you guys, man. You guys are amazing. Give me to 11K. Tell your auntie, your grandma, your nieces, your, your cousins. Tell them, subscribe to AG Tactical, you know? Check me out. <laughs> Until the next one, people. Stay inside. Stay safe. I'm out of here.